Hey, number crunchers. I have had a request to show how to implement steepest descent in MATLAB, and I'm happy to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, a sample function here on the board, give you a little rundown of what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to implement it in MATLAB. Now, to be uh, fair here, I am going to use, uh, I'm going to do this strictly from the command line. I'm not going to write a MATLAB M function because I want to be able to kind of narrate as things go along. If you want to take what I've done and turn it into an M function, you can just copy stuff off the screen and it'll, it, it's fairly easy to uh, automate in that way. So I'm going to be doing it step by step. So we need an a, uh, objective function to work with. This is the Rosenbrock banana function. I don't know who Rosenbrock is, but he's apparently invented that and it's very, very handy. It gets used a lot in optimization. This is sort of kind of what it looks like. The idea here is that it's got, uh, got a, a valley that kind of goes that way and it uh, poses some challenge for, uh, challenges for optimization routines. So we're going to start up here. We're going to start at x0 is 2 and y0 is going to be 2 as well. And we're going to use steepest descent, which means I'm going to calculate a gradient and I'm going to go off in that direction. I'm going to find the minimum along that direction, which is where the, uh, uh, the uh, line of search goes parallel to contour lines. And then I'm going to stop there, calculate another gradient, develop a new search direction, and then search in that direction. The second search direction has to be perpendicular to the first. Every successive search direction is perpendicular to the one that comes before it. Because you start going normal to a contour line and you end going parallel to a contour line. If you're parallel to a contour line, the steepest, the direction of steepest descent is going to be normal to that line, so that, that's why it's perpendicular. And eventually it would zigzag down this valley to find that. I'll only do two, maybe three uh, iterations in MATLAB so you can see what it's doing. So enough of this, let's go to MATLAB. Okay, I've started up MATLAB and you can see some of the commands down here in command history. I'm going to be recalling some of those rather than have you watch me type them in because watching somebody else type is pretty boring. Let's start by figuring out the gradient using the symbolic processor in MATLAB. Okay, I'm going to define x and y as symbolic variables and they show up over here now. All right. And let's see. Let's see if I can recall this. There it is. Okay, there's the banana function. And the next thing I want is the gradient of the banana function. And there it is. All right. Now, I want to work with x and y later. And it's going to be difficult to do that uh, treating them as numeric variables because I've already got them defined as symbolic variables. Now, this is a little heavy handed what I'm about to do, but this does work just fine. I'm going to clear the workspace. Now I don't have any variables defined, and the only thing I know about the banana function and the gradient are what's sitting in the command window. I know what that text is, so I know what they are, but I don't have any way of pulling them from workspace anymore. The, the reason I'm doing that is now I can treat x and y as numeric variables. So I've typed this in before, so I've recalled it, and I've put those dots in here to, to make sure it's a vector function. So there's b defined. And then let's say db, oops, dx, there's the, there's the first term in the gradient, that's the one right there. And db, dy, there's the second term. So I've got them now. Now this is going to be an exercise in moving through design space using steepest descent. So to make this a little more uh, easy to follow perhaps, let's, I don't really need that. I'm going to make a figure right over here that has two plots on it. On the top I'm going to use the or put the contour plot and on the bottom I'm going to do the 1D search. So there's a command called subplot that lets you put uh, more than one axis in a figure. Now I said here subplot 211 that means two rows one column and I'm interested in plot one which will be at the top. So there it is right there. Okay, I'm going to pull that down so I can use all of it. And now I'm, this is the active plot right now. I'm going to say F contour. Whoops, spell it right. There we go. 
contour. Now I'm going to go from minus 4 to 4 in the x direction and minus 2 to 10 in the y direction just like is in the book and if you're uh, following in the book or would like to know how to find it it's called Fundamentals of Optimization. The author's me, Mark French and it's uh, published by Springer. Now the other thing I've got in here is called level step 10. That's what defines the vertical distance between contour lines. And I played around a little bit earlier and found out that uh, setting that to 10 gives me a usable number of contours. So there it is. Let's see, I want grid. Okay, there's that. That's good. Now I'm going to need a starting point. I told you on the board I was going to start at 2, 2. So there that is. Let's go ahead and put that point on this plot over here so we know where we're starting. Now to note, this goes from minus 4 to 4, so that's 8, minus 2 to 10, that's a span of 12. So these square, these little boxes here, don't have uh, even x and y dimensions. There's a little bit of distortion here. So if, you, if it looks like we're not making uh, perpendicular moves on this uh, contour plot, it's because of that distortion. So I want to put those those uh, uh, that initial point on there. So I'm going to say, hold on. Here comes another another uh, element. I'm going to put on that uh, plot. So there, there's, I'm going to plot the point x0, y0, and I'm going to mark it with a circle. That's what that little O means there. And there it is, right there. Okay. So. Uh, next thing to do is to pick a search direction. Well the search direction is the negative of the gradient at x0, y0. So I'll call S1, that's the negative of the first element of the gradient evaluated at that point. S2 is the, y, the second term of the gradient. There's that. Now I have a search direction and I have to define now my x and y variables uh, along that search direction. And the distance along the search direction I'm going to call d. So I'm going to say xd equals there. I'm going to start at point zero, 00. There's the magnitude along the search direction and there's the search direction. So this is a straight line. And remember y equals mx plus b? Well that would be y. That's m would be the slope. There's x. That's how far I go in that direction. And b, there's where, where's where I started. It's not exactly an uh, analogy, but you get the idea. That's clearly a straight line. Do the same thing for y. Now that I've got x and y defined in terms of d, I can go ahead and define the uh, objective function in terms of d. So there's that. And if I want now, I can actually draw a plot 2D plot now showing how the objective function varies as D increases. So I want that to be on the lower part of the, my, my uh, figure over there. So that's 2, 1, 2. So I've, I've opened it up. There were two rows, one column. That's the second plot. And I'm going to plot, sorry, I'm going to do easy plot. Okay, and I'm going to go from 0 to point 0.1 in the B direction. Now, the reason I know that's point 0.1 is I messed around a little bit before I turned the recorder on and found out that, that that gives me about the right range. So there it is. Let's turn the grid on as well, make it a little easier to look at. So it looks like the minimum ought to be, what, about 0 0.0033 or so. Well, let's find out exactly. Let's make a variable d star okay, and find what it is using fmin search. Well, 0326, what I guess, 033. So now I know what d star is, basically how far I've gone in this direction. So now I've got to define my new x and y, x1, y1. So that's xd at d star, y1, yd at d star. Well, let's go back to subplot 211. And I'm just going to say hold on again. I, I think it retained that, but I don't think I need to type this in. But it isn't going to hurt to, re, to retype it. So there's my plot command before where I had x0, y0. Let's go to x1, y1. All right, there's my next, my next uh, 
point there. Now notice there's a little bit of distortion here because this axis and this axis are not the same. All right, now I've got that. Well, what do I do? Well, let's let's uh, define my new search direction, and I'm going to I'm going to reuse S1 and Y1. So there's that. Now I'm, I'm echoing all this stuff to the screen, letting it scroll by, so that if you want to try this on your own, you can try it and see if you get the same numbers I get. So there's S2. Very good. Now let's redefine that. Now that has to be X1 now. YD. Also Y1 there. Okay. Now, do I have to redefine uh, BD? I don't think so, but I'm going to rerun it anyway. Isn't going to hurt. Okay. So I'm ready to go. Now I can replot down here. Okay. So I'm going to say subplot plot 212. So this is now the active plot. And I'm going to say easy plot. Now, this is going to look different. I'm going to overwrite this. I did not say hold on. I don't want to. I don't want to retain this anymore. I want it to go away. So there it is. I used the same range, but it looks like a straight line. What's that? Well, it means I didn't go out far enough. Let's increase that by a factor of ten. Wow. Let's increase it by another factor of ten. There we go. Okay. So now it looks like D star must be what about two point seven or so? Two point eight maybe. Well, let's find out. Yeah, 2.78. Okay, so we've got that. Let's turn the grid on just to, for reasons of good form, I suppose. All right, so we've got that. Let's say, let's redefine our, our x point. So now I've got x2. And pull that back. Rename that as y2. There it is. Now. Now, but I got to make sure I do this right. I want to be on subplot 211. And let's go ahead and uh, let's take a risk here. x2, comma, y2. Oops. There. So there's my next one. Now you see it's, it's cycling through colors here. It's got a color. Uh, chart that go it goes through the colors as you put more and more points on. I can if I want to you know, define the color over here in the plot command I can. Um, I can actually go through here and I can highlight those and I can change the color if I want. Let's make those all what's a good color? How about red? There's red. There's red. And there's red. Turn that off. Okay. So the next the next point's going to be out here, and you can see I'm going to zigzag down until I get to the point one one, which on this uh, axis is going to be right about there, I think. All right. So there's the first couple of iterations of steepest descent. Now that you see how the iterations go, you can just keep running these until you get to a, the uh, a converge to the answer you're looking for. You can continue until you reach some exit criteria. I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.